All right. Praise the Lord. We're getting ready to start here. Hopefully, we may have a few others uh, join in. Um, with the women doing theirs, uh, we might have to move things around a little bit so that we get, uh, you know, all this working together simultaneously and, uh, um, you know, hopefully uh, we can do that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be back and forth here between uh, some notes. Uh, we were, again, you know, talking about uh, the, uh, the importance of repentance and, um, and the idea is to, um, move towards God. Um, and that is, uh, extremely important when, when we, um, when we repent. And again, it has to be something that is um, heartfelt and uh, there is um, action behind it. Uh, we had brought out uh, uh, the scripture um, that we are to work out our salvation with uh, fear and trembling. Um, there again, there is a... Um, there is a, a definite call uh, to show, how can I say, some credibility behind what is being said. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, what kind of things are you putting in place? What kind of things are you trying to do to help uh, yourself um, stay away from the uh you know the sinful lifestyle uh several uh avenues you know you know once a person uh repents uh of a sinful lifestyle uh you have to be you have to have an a knowledge of one's self in other words what um what am i uh what are my weaknesses where will um uh you know my friendships take me uh what what places do i need to stay away from i i've said this uh before and i've, I've used this um, years ago, uh, there was a man uh, when I was a teenager, um, and the family had come into the church. This man was a uh, was an alcoholic. He was um, he was uh, involved in Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, uh, all this. And somebody had witnessed to them and the, and the family came to church and they had all received the Holy Ghost. He had received the Holy Ghost. Um, you know, fast forward a little bit. Uh, he said that, you know, uh, in a testimony one time he was asked about it and he was going to share it with the church. And uh, he said that there are certain places that I do not walk by because of uh, my uh, involvement in it. And I would, you know, and he says, I still consider myself an alcoholic. Uh, and he said, if I don't, I could fall back into that rather quickly. Uh, he said, I don't even walk close if I'm uh, if if I'm in town and 
on the one side of the street is is a pub. He said, I cross the other side of the street and stay away from that pub unless the smell of that alcohol draws me into that place. I, you know, and he was, you know, he's being honest and he's being, um, uh, uh, forthright, you know, there are things that safeguards that we have to, um, put into our life, uh, addictions can be resurfaced. Um, sinful addictions can be resurfaced uh, by, how can I say, uh, association or um, uh, not having some sort of safeguard that you follow uh, within your life. Uh, people have um, had, uh, you know, have had drug addictions. Now it depends, um, you know, how bad those addictions were and how deep they, uh, and how much the body had, uh, desired them. But, uh, if that person would, you know, maybe go to, uh, you know, a friend who was, um, you know, uh, who was addicted also, or who is addicted also, and, you know, stop by their place or talk to them, that could get them in the place where, you know, the friend's going to offer and they're going to take part of it. And, um, and they're back into that cycle of addiction, which, um, you know, after you repented of it, can you know can get even harder um to turn away from so what would be the safeguard well the safeguard would be um no i uh, i'm not coming over to your place if you want to i'm going to church tonight um or uh, i'm going to church today whatever the case may be and once you uh you know, why don't you uh, come with me? So, you know, that's that's a safeguard that'll help you stay away from that. Um, and uh, never being alone with those uh, people that have those addictions is another great, how can I say, um, safeguard to put into your life so we have you know we have had looked at what's involved in uh you know the that letter shin uh which is in the hebrew alphabet that's used uh quite commonly um uh with uh, the Jewish people, those who practice Judaism, um, and how it um, relates to uh, God, how it relates to, uh, uh, you know, putting God um, in the forefront of their lives, uh, having God as a guardian and so uh and putting that um uh to how can i say uh to put it in the forefront of their lives okay one thing about the shin um Again, it was something, and we see it in Scripture in the King James Version. It calls them frontlets, okay, that they wore in a forehead. Actually, you can still see that um, done uh, in 
uh, in Israel. Uh, many of them will put that, not all of them, I'm just saying there's, there's quite a few that will wear that uh, on their foreheads. Okay, what does that have to do with all this? Well, it has to do that we have to, okay, um, uh, God has to be the center, all right? Repentance means, you know, we're, we change our focus. We don't, you know, we're not involved in this world like we were in the past. We don't get involved with um, the people uh, of our past like we did in the past. I mean, we can invite them to church. We can uh, witness to them. We can teach them a home Bible study, all that kind of stuff. But I would never suggest, you know, if you're uh, in, you know, involved with them in a, uh, how can I say drugs, alcohol or whatever, that you would uh, ever do that alone. You would take you would need, if you're going to their place, you would need to take someone with you that never had that problem and um, is there to um, help you. You know, uh, we all have different things that can uh, trigger different problems within our lives. Uh, and uh, we have to be careful of to know what those triggers are to get us involved in the sin that we have repented of. But the idea of repentance is, is much more uh, uh, inclusive uh, than just something that you speak or you confess and ask, ask the Lord to forgive you. It's, it's a little bit... Uh, a broader than that in respects that uh, without repentance, you can really never uh, understand what, um, you know, what is wrong with, uh, uh, how can I say, other things that will come up in life that you become aware of. Uh, there are, uh, you know, thousands of, of uh, people that have come to the Lord and have fallen away uh, rather quickly because they didn't realize the inclusiveness uh, the um, and how broad it is in our life. In other words, um, what a lot of people do, and especially in our culture today, is uh, you put you put um, you know God church and religion that's over here in this box and it's only opened when uh it's a service time or something like that okay and uh and then any other time it's you know well i'm at work well i'm doing this or i'm on vacation and all this kind of different stuff where Okay, you do things that you would never do uh, and say things that you uh, would never do in, in church around uh, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, you just wouldn't do it. And so this, this happens, uh, how can I say, pretty commonly in our culture, and it's what we've seen um, lived out in front of us. It's what we heard uh, and seen many times growing up from adults 
and um, and as we uh, matured, we we took on some of those same viewpoints. Um, basically, uh, we uh, uh, we gained those same habits by osmosis, and it's just not um, something that we should engage ourselves or allow ourselves. So, what's this broader thing about repentance I'm talking about? Okay, it goes back to the Shema. Okay, it goes back to the Shema. Um, and uh, let's, uh, well, let's, let's turn there in Deuteronomy. And uh, many times uh, we forget um, uh, how can I say um, what the Lord has done for us and uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 6 and I'm looking here uh, at verse 4 it says hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Okay. And with all thy soul and with all thy might. So if we are heading towards the Lord and we are going towards true repentance, we're confessing our sin and all this. This is basically the command again uh as we had looked at that overhead and um uh in in class and we seen the um we seen the shin and the structure of um how can i say the holy site um the the main holy places of Jerusalem. Um, and you have the Temple Mount pretty much in the middle of all this. Uh, you begin to find out that, hey, there's more involved in this than I um, uh, maybe understood before. And so we end up having God in and in, in our our religious self uh, placed away in another box and we can't with this type of wording that cannot exist that cannot exist okay if we're moving towards god okay if we're placing god's name in our life and see this is what happens at baptism See, at baptism, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you take on Christ, you put, it is a type of shadow of putting on Christ. And it's also a, how can I say, a covenant that's made um, with your repentance uh, that you have, you know, you have died out to that life. Well, you can't die out and have two different boxes you're living in. Okay. You can only have one box. Okay. And that has to, and that box has to, how can I say, uh, govern your choices and the things that we do in life. Does that mean we're always going to do what's right? Well, I'm not saying that that's going to be the case. Uh, many times you're going to probably find yourself doing things that you um, uh, didn't expect. But here again, uh, John, in, in the epistles of John, John wrote to us uh, and <clears throat> Uh, let us know in the end of chapter one and um, 
uh, in the first epistle of John and into chapter two, that we have an av advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. Another one, in other words, um, if we're faithful and just, in other words, uh, we're willing to confess the sin. In other words, deal with the sin. Okay. And, uh, uh, and he is faithful and just to forgive us of that sin. Uh, and the scripture says not our, not just our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. You know, in other words, this is the willingness of our Lord and Savior. That's his love that he has for us. That is the love that he is trying, that John is trying his best to um, get across uh, to the people of that day. Um, see, many of the many of the gods uh, that were, you know, of the pagans, um, of the Gentiles of that time. Uh, were quite austere, and uh, in other words, they're pretty mean. And many times, these gods would, uh, you know, would demand certain things, and they would, and uh, uh, if you've ever um, read any anything or had uh, history on uh, the gods of. Uh, uh, ancient Greece and Rome, uh, you, you'll begin to get the idea of, um, you know, uh, some of the stories that are uh, uh, behind them. If you didn't do the proper thing, you know, you could be uh, turned into stone or you could have this happen to you. And so, uh, John's trying to get across to him and said, listen, you know, our Savior is not the same as, as these gods that you had worshipped in the past. And he's painting a picture in, this, in his epistle, in his letter uh, uh, to the church that, hey, this is, there's something more that you need to understand about this, okay? Uh, there's something, you know, uh, you don't have to do the type of penances that you had to do uh, worshiping these other gods. The Lord wants to help you and wants to bring you totally out of sin. He's here to help you. But it's, you know, and he's also driving across that, um, you know, if we love the Lord, we're not going to continue in the sin that we walked in the past. So he's painting, uh, he, he's painting uh, uh, Jesus here. He's painting God as somebody that is merciful and is, you know, has his, you know, arm outstretched towards mankind okay and he is uh wanting to pull mankind from the muck and the mire of sin that uh really as as the psalmist said uh it, it so easily besets us in other words it it doesn't take much to uh for us to be um involved in sin it, it's uh in fact you know uh he's painting the picture there the psalmist is that uh you know i it, it's not something you have to force on it, it's something that is easily uh brought on so how do, how do we how do we handle this well when we love the lord our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, um, uh, and, uh, you know, and we are to, um, you know, love our brother as um, ourselves. The, these things 
are very, very important in saying, listen, are we walking in the love of God? Are we participating in this? Uh, because we deny loving God with our heart, soul, and mind when uh, we allow uh, to have two different boxes in our lives. Again, that, that box for our religious end and then that box for the world. We begin to really, really um, uh, hurt uh, who and what we should be. Uh, throughout the years, I have found um, many people Okay, and uh, that when they have gone through troubles and trials, they are, you know, they are tested. Okay, uh, they are uh, tested in a way that, um, how can I say, uh, it just, you know, uh, they get themselves really mixed up in a whole, um, um, a whole lot of things, <laughs> uh, and uh, see, it's easy to uh, have the same temptations um, come back to you. Okay, it's easy to have those things show up again um, oh, within uh, your life of the past. Um, so, again, safeguards. How are we going to put those safeguards in? Well, that's what the brethren are for. That's what our brothers and sisters in the Lord are for. Uh, <clears throat> James talked about this um, in his epistle to the church. Um, and he talked about having accountability. And we see it in the wording in the King James like this, uh, you know, confess your faults one to another. For another and pray one for another okay uh this is what the church is see if we love each other okay and we show that love and and that love's going to be tested um if there's true love we're we're going to keep some confidences and people are going to feel safe. We feel safe around people that we love and we know they love us. The only time we don't feel uh, really safe is, uh, and we are on guard is when uh, there's some doubt in our mind. Okay. That's a natural thing for humanity. Now, uh, but God's calling us to even greater love um, that uh, that kind of love that lays down a life uh, for a friend. And that is, that is a love that is, um, how can I say, uh, oftentimes, um, is how can I say not reciprocated back to us and God's calling us to to love those uh, and we find Jesus teaching on, on it on the Sermon on the Mount he says you know uh, we're supposed to love those who persecute us and say all manner of evil against us and all these things and you know if we're going to be more like Christ, we have to move and we have to live in that realm. In other words, we're not so much self-involved. 
everything about the shin is pointing upwards. It's pointing away from us. And so I, you know, one of the indications of this in repentance is, again, the idea that there's more people out there than just ourselves. And we should be more concerned about just our own desires, uh, wants, and that we have to push past our fears uh, for uh, to help many times someone else. Uh, this will, you know, this will cause us to do things that um, that we uh, probably wouldn't normally do. And many times, the reason why we're not involved uh, in uh, reaching others is because uh, there's some fear there of what would happen if we do. Um, well, many times people have done things uh, that was that was beyond their ability. Uh, well, we've had the stories of the people moving cars that they did not have the strength to move. Okay. But because of the situation and because of the adrenaline uh, that was coursing through their body or uh, the hand of God, whatever it is, um, that uh, enabled them to do that. Um, they did basically what they normally don't do. And that's, uh, in other words, we go past the fear. All we see is that other person and the need that's in within their life to be, sa to be saved from the circumstance that they're in. Uh, we've got to again realize that there is a world out there. If we're going towards God, okay, we're moving away from self, we are moving up to the place where the congregation is. We're moving in, in, in a way, uh, we're moving towards others. And, um, and many times uh, we are bringing others with us. So here's... Um, the repentance is again deeper it means more than what we have traditionally conveyed why because um, you know the influence of uh, catholicism uh, has reduced Many times, um, uh, repentance to, you know, going to a priest and confessing those things to a priest and, um, and then, you know, go back out of the church and, you know, do the same things over again and then go back and do, you know, confess the same things. Um, I mean, th this, this can be a, uh, you know, this is, you know, having two boxes you live in and uh, you've got your religious box and, and, and you've got your everyday go to work and uh, in the community box. And that's, that's what you, um, you know, that's how you operate. So again, we have to be uh, very, very careful because repentance influences all our life. It, it influences, okay, true repentance um, brings our mind, our body, our soul, uh, everything under the blood of Jesus Christ uh, when we were baptized in Jesus' name. And now we put on the name of God. 
we put that name above us, over us. We're no longer doing the Mishnah like the Jews do. It is, uh, it is written within the doorpost of our heart. Okay. Um, uh, this, this whole idea that is, uh, it, that the Lord uh, gave prophecies that there would be a time coming that uh, his law would no longer be written in stone. Okay. But that his law would be written into the hearts of men. We live under that type of grace now and when we've come to the lord we really need to come to the lord now you, you're saying well i never really done that well that's something that you need to do because uh this is the part again you know the lord's not holding a sledgehammer over your head when you mess up you know your kids will do something wrong. It doesn't mean you go out there and, uh, you know, uh, you execute them uh, because they done, uh, you know, as children, they done something wrong. That's, you know, that's insane. Uh, but, you know, the Lord loves us and he's concerned about us. Yeah, he's going to, you know, uh, you know, hope put us under conviction so we don't uh, want to go that direction again, that there's conviction there because our hearts are turned towards the Lord. And, you know, we realize, you know, what we done was, you know, something that happened in the moment and, you know, not something that we do all the time. And, uh, you know, and, and we have we have some godly sorrow uh, over it. And uh, there's there's some real repentance. And, and and this is what we have to do. But, you know, we often talk about these things, but we do not talk about what what it is uh for us once we repented and how that affects other things and people around us and and how we deal with that so i guess you just heard the dogs take off um but i am i am just i i'm just trying to um put this within your heart and put this within your mind that listen, there's more to this. Okay. This is something that we teach. Uh, and, um, uh, <clears throat> he, and, he, and the Lord says, listen, uh, it, uh, uh, they're to be in your heart in verse six. In other words, they're to be in your heart. And then there's something you need to repeat. Repeat them um, to your children and talk about them. Um, and it, it's something, it's a conversation that we need to have. Again, yeah, if we have children in our home, this is something that we need to bring up. And even if they're adults and, and not in our home anymore, that's something, you know, that we can bring up. And uh, we are to make it a way of life. Verse eight is talking about buying them as a sign on your hand. And that's, that's having to do again with the shin um, and a reminder of this and in, and a symbol on your forehead. Okay. These were, um, um, these were all important uh, as reminders, but what would that mean to us today? Well, to bind them uh, is, in other words, to practice them in your hands. In other words, your hands, your actions, the things you do. And then on your forehead, it's the things that you think about. Um, Paul wrote that um, 
that there's certain things that we should think about. There's certain things that we should meditate on. And, um, and if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, you know, uh, and the King James says, we are to uh, think on those things. In other words, if we're to concentrate on those things. We are to uh, put them. All right. Uh, and it is, is something, okay, uh, that at home, verse nine, write them on the doorpost of your house and on your city gates. Uh, in other words, okay, in my house, we're not going to allow this garbage, okay? It's not stuff that we're going to, to allow in our home. And, uh, and what about our city gates? Well, that's very important. What does that mean? That, that means there's other people out there that need to know this truth. In other words, this is going outside of ourselves and our own little habitat and our own little world that we live in and that we have to be others minded. We can't, how can we be others minded when we live in two different boxes? How can we be others minded when we are, uh, you know, when, you know, one part of our life contradicts the other? You know, it cannot be. If we truly repented and we live in this way, there is everything is judged by the word of God. Everything that we do, everything that we're involved in has to run through the, uh, how can I say, the Bible test. And god's word test all right we have to we have to run it uh through there and it's not going to be selfish okay if it's if it's for uh selfishness okay it's not going to work out but if if you do it towards the lord you know god's going to i think god will do things that you have not expected, okay? Uh, and we need, uh, again, to have these things written within our hearts and minds, okay? And... Uh, and we must allow them. I'm going to close here and we'll pick up later. Uh, but again, I hope that you remember some of these points. True repentance means that this part that has been called the Shema by the Jews is something that we do not forget. And that is something that we practice. We're not going to repentance to check off a block or have a check mark um, on a ticket. Okay. We cannot think about it that way. When we join a family, okay, we become part of that family. They are family to the day we die. And so, you know, Lord, help us uh, to <laughs> think about it in that way. And so let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blessings, for your goodness. We pray, Lord God, that you would help us. And as we endeavor to be more like you, Lord, that we would find peace and rest and in you, that we would find ourselves worshiping and praising you. 
Lord God, and thinking about you and your word and concentrating on you and finding pleasure, Lord God, in worshiping and praising, Lord God, and being in your presence. Oh God, that our hearts would be turned towards you, that our souls, our minds, our thoughts would be gauged, Lord God, whether you would accept it or not. We pray that you would be with us, Lord God, that you would sh let those that don't understand your love and your compassion, that their eyes would be open, that their ears would hear, not so they can continue in sin, but Lord, that they may be brought out of sin. And we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. God bless you. And um, hope to see you all soon.